Hey everybody, it's Ian Cunningham from Vector GB here. Um, in common with a number of you, I'm now working from home. And of course, this means I'm having to work with Prevision over my home internet connection, which is definitely not an internet connection with the same bandwidth as I would typically have at work. So I thought I'd just take a couple of moments to show you how I am able to connect to a Prevision server and, and work even with this restricted bandwidth connection. So just for information, my, my home bandwidth, um, the, the best I've ever had is, is 40 megabit per second. So you, you can uh, do the maths yourselves. That, that equates to about a five megabyte per second internet connection for my home office. Um, I'm going to do a, a demo for you here with uh, version 9 of Prevision, Service Pack 10. Um, this is because that's the server that I, I have available to me. What I'm showing you though is available with version 8.5 of, Pre of Prevision and onwards. If you have any questions about how to do this, then please contact your local vector office and they'll be able to uh, put you in touch with the people that will, will help you um, work in, in this way. So what I'm using is I'm using Prevision's partial model transfer support um, to try and make it easy for you to see what's going on. I've, I've also got this um, resource monitor, Windows resource monitor in the background to, to try to show you uh, what's happening on my internet connection as, as I'm working. So here I have the Prevision splash screen. Uh, I have my, my project, my password already uh, they're waiting to go. What I just want to do quickly is I'm going to set this to be no active scope. Okay, so this means that when I connect to the server, Prevision is going to fetch the absolute minimum amount of data uh, possible to, to work with. Uh, so this is default operation, as I've said in nine already, uh, and it's also uh, the uh, able to be done in version 8, version 8.5. So there's there's nobody working with the server that uh, should feel they have to fetch all the data uh, from from their server every time they they connect. So they can they can fetch data as they need it, and that's that's what I'm going to be doing here. So as soon as Prevision starts up, because I've selected no active scope, it's going to put me into a scope definition view. So we can see this just loading up in the background now. And there we go. So it's working with some data on my hard drive. It's now, we can see uh, little tiny peaks in my network traffic started to um, pull some data over from the server. And here again, we can see Prevision is, is doing some work to, to pull data over from the server. So this um, is, is really, you can see the peak here. Is, is is like one megabit is down it's actually dropped down now to, to kilobits per second so it's really not working my my home internet connection hard at all so give it a few more moments and it will have pulled the data over now i am really uh working with my internet connection so we'll see this uh obviously it's slower than it would be at work <laughs> but it still works so this is good, it means I can carry on working. So now I'm into my, my scope definition view. So what Prevision is, is giving me here is a view where I can define a new scope. So you'll know scopes obviously provide just a, a small, uh, like a window into the model. So we don't necessarily see everything. It's a way of tidying up the model tree when we're working normally or allowing us to focus in a specific area, not getting lost in the model tree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scope. So I'll give it a, a suitable name, remote work demo. And so that will come in and this gets default content of my scratch pad and, and the admin. And now I'm actually using our standard demo model. So in the background, every time I'm clicking here, we can see I just get this little pending message and you'll see a little peak of network traffic. So let's assume I'm going to work with requirements in here. So I'm going to drop this into my scope and now 
I can enable my scope. Now watch the network traffic in the background here because what's going to happen is the Prevision client is now going to ask the server for only, only this content. And because uh, I've created a, a scope, it's going to ask me if I want to uh, commit more changes. So I, there we go. You can see I've put a, a new scope in, which has created an association to this. So I'll quickly put in new scope for home working and click a commit. And off we go. And automatically, pre-revision will now change over and activate the scope. We can see my network traffic is shooting up. So this is a combination of, of the commit. Um, and now also, of course, the client is fetching the data. It's fetched the data, blah, blah, blah. And it's now just going to change over. So hopefully any second now, I'll flick over into my E. There we go. So now I've got my data and I'm able to work. So obviously I'm in a scope, I only have this view, but now everything that was available in this scope uh, that I've defined is available to me for working with. And I can open my table, which again will just take a couple of seconds and I'll have the data available and I can start creating the requirements or making requirements links. Um, it's going to ask me for workspace because of this table needs a workspace. So I'm not going to set one because I haven't brought in the mapping containers. And there we go. So what happens though, if I go to a requirement which is linked to an artifact, which I, I don't have available. So here I have, uh, let's find a link. Ah, I'll tell you what, let's just look for the mappings, even easier. So if I look into my mappings, oops, without causing it to, to redraw too much, there we go. So I have this mapping that I may be interested in. Now, if I double click on this, Prevision in the background has temporarily added this to my scope. So I can, although I didn't include the mapping container originally, I can now, via this mapping, I can find the mapped artifact. And look, this is going to a geometry package, which again is outside of my scope. So it's shown gray here. What I can do, if I click, I get the option to add again this to my scope temporarily. So this gets added in. Again, we see the peak in the network traffic in the background. But now what I can find is the whole of that geometry is being brought in to my client. So everything down here has just been brought into my client in the background for me as I've gone in and, and found stuff. So if I open up the uh, drawing here, this will be not particularly pretty, but I will be able to open this drawing. There we go. And if I zoom out a little bit, I can see now the wiring diagram for my uh, convertible top. So this is a very quick view on working with um, scopes and partial model support to enable those of us who are working from home with limited network connections to still be able to fetch data. So it, it means I have to pause momentarily every now and then to fetch some data, but I don't have a really big long startup time. I'm not having to transfer lots and lots of data that I may not even want to use over my limited home connection. So stay tuned to Vector's YouTube channel for more hints and tips on how to use our tools. And please contact us if you have any questions on using any of the features you've seen in this video.